Okay, in this video we are going to look at adding and subtracting radicals. And then we'll look at multiplying uh, radical expressions. And maybe a third thing we'll, we'll look at again is rationalizing, uh, rationalizing denominators. But this time ones that have two terms on them. We've done ones with one term. We'll look at ones with two terms. First thing, if I'm adding radicals, um, uh, when you look at it, you have to think of it as being different than multiplying. When you multiply radicals, the product rule says if you're multiplying two radicals, you can multiply by the product of those or take the square root of the product of those two inside. If you're adding radicals, what's the rule? Well, here's the rule. To add radicals, simplify each term if you can. Like if there's a radical that says root of 16, you probably want to make that 4. So simplify each term, then if the radicands are the same, that's these guys, then you add or subtract the coefficient, the numbers out front, and keep the radical the same. So for this question here, I guess this would be almost the same as saying 2x plus 7x. When, if we were adding those, we'd say that's 11x. If we're adding these radicals, I guess 2 plus 7 isn't 11, is it? <laughs> Sorry, 9. If we're adding these ones, 2 plus 7 would be 9, and we'd keep the radical the same. So the answer to that would be 9 root 5. Try some here. Press pause and then try it. Okay, this one you should have got 9 root 3. Hopefully my adding's right. 3 take away 6, I'd be down 3 root 3. Uh, both root 5, so 8 take away 7 would be 1 root 5. Or I could just write that as root 5. Just like if I have 1x, that's the same as x. Same thing here. Um, yeah, hold on here. I can't do anything with this one. I would just have to write it as 7 root 5 minus 5 root 3 because the radicands aren't the same. If they're not the same, you can't do anything with that. Unless I could simplify these, but 5 and 3, uh, you can't. Okay, here's one. Uh, I take a look at this one and I say, well, the radicands aren't the same. But my rule says try and simplify something. So I wonder if I could simplify these. Like at 6 root 10, that's 5 times 2. I, neither of those I could take the square root of. So I think I'm stuck with that one as 6 root 10. But 4 or 40 is 4 times 10. So maybe I could rewrite that as 4 times 10. Use the product rule. And instead of root of 4 times 10, I'm going to say it's the root of 4 times the root of 10. That's a product rule. And the square root of 4 is 2, so that would be 6 root 10 minus 5 times 2 times root 10. Notice square root of 4 is just a 2, and there's multiplying in between all of these. So this would just be 5 times 2. So this is 6 root 10 uh, minus 10 root 10. Now my radicands are the same. So if they're the same, I can add or subtract the coefficients. I'm up 6, I lose 10, I'd be down 4, root 10. Okay, here's a couple maybe that you can try. Okay, root 24, 54, they're not the same, but can I make them the same? Um, 24, that's the same as 4 times 6, so it's root 4 times root 6, plus 54 is the same as root 9 times root 6. 9 times 6 is 54. Square root of 4 is 2, so this would be 2 root 6, plus square root of 9 is 3, so 3 root 6. Now the radicands are the same, so 2 plus 3 would be 5 root 6. I should put an equal sign there. So this and this are the same. There's another one. Ooh, factor. I could factor that first one, so I could rewrite it as 9 times x plus 1, plus the next one I could factor out of 4. So 4 times x plus 1. Notice when I factor it out, it stays within that radical. Now I can use the product law. So this would be root 9 times root x plus 1. And this one would be root 4 times root x plus 1. Square root of 9 is 3. So this would be 3 times the square root of x plus 1 plus 2 times the square root of x plus 1. So... When I put those together, now the radicands are the same. So 3 plus 2 is 5. So I'd have 5 root x plus 1. Okay, here's another one. 
This one looks a bit more challenging. Let's let's see what happens here. First off, it's a fraction. Maybe let's deal with that first. So let's take the square root of 1 over 2, and let's multiply top and bottom by 2, because I'm wanting to get rid of that radical on the bottom. So this would be root 2 plus uh, square root of 2 over 4, which is the same as root 2 plus root 2 over root 4. Following me there, that's a quotient rule. So root 2 plus root 2 over 2. Ah. <laughs> okay, so no more radical on the bottom. But now I'm adding things, so I have to get a common denominator. So uh, the denominator would be 2. So I'm going to change this one to uh, 2 root 2 over 2. So I multiply top and bottom by 2 plus root 2 over 2. And so now the denominators are the same, so I can write the numerators together over the one denominator. Now the top, can I add those? Yeah, they're both the same radicand. So this is 2 plus 1, so that'll be 3 root 2 over 2. Okay? Okay, now sometimes we can also use the distributive property with radicals. So I can multiply this by this and this by this. So root 3 times root 5 would be root 3 times root 5. I'm just putting an extra step in there. Plus root 3 times root 2. Root 3 times root 2. Simplifying, product rule, root 3 times root 5 would be root 15. Plus root 3 times root 2 would be root 6. Um, they're different radicands, can't do anything more. This would be where I would finish. Let's try this one. And maybe try it, press pause, press play. The end, in the end, you should be getting with this one root 14 plus root six. Notice I can't put the, the radical over all of them. This times this would just be root 14. This times this would be root six, and I'm adding them. Okay, now, here we've got one where I've got a binomial times a binomial. Uh, but I can do FOIL with radicals again. Um, and maybe try it. Press pause and see if you can try them. If not, watch. So 1 times 4. I'm just going to write it out the whole thing. So 1 times 4. And then this times this will be plus 1 times 3 root 5. And then negative root 2 times 4. So minus uh, root 2 times 4, and then minus root 2 times 3 root 5. So minus root 2 times 3 root 5. Okay, 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 3 root 5 would just be 3 root 5. Um, root 2 times 4, this one's not in a radical, so I can't use the product rule. So that would just be 4 root 2. Notice you put the number first and then the irrational number second. And then this last one will be minus, okay, the radical and radical, that's a product rule. I can make those root 10. And then 3 times 1 would just be 3. So 3 root 10. Now, none of those radicands are the same. And even though this one's a 10, I'd love to go 2, 5 there, but there's nothing that I can do to get it out of the radical. So this one is done as it sits. Let's try this one. Root 2 times root 2, that would be square root of 4, which is 2. Notice I'm skipping steps this time. Root 2 times root of a would be a minus root 2a. They're both under a radical, so I can multiply them. Root a times root 2 would be a positive root 2a. And root a times a minus root a would be a minus root a squared. But the square root of a squared is just a. So I'm just going to put an a there. Now, these radicands are the same, so I can add or subtract their coefficients. Negative 1 plus 1, these ones cancel. So this one would wind up with being 2, take away a. Notice I skip some steps there. Feel free to skip some if you're getting them right every time. If you, if you mess up a little bit, put some more steps in. Now, now that we know how to do that multiplying uh, by binomials, that'll help us when we have to rationalize a denominator that has two terms. Remember, if we just had one term, like root 2, like I have 1 over root 2, 
I could multiply top and bottom by root 2. I'd get the square root of 4 on the bottom, which is just 2, and then on the top I'd have root 2. When I have two terms in the denominator, I can't do that. But I can still rationalize it. But the process that I do is I multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So let me rewrite what I've got, 7 plus root 5. And I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by a factor of 1. It'll be both the same. But I'm wanting to cancel that radical on the bottom. So I just use a trick. And it's the difference of squares kind of trick where the radical will cancel. So I'm going to multiply it by 7 minus root 5. And that's what the conjugate is. It's the exact same thing as this, except you just change this sign. If I do it on the bottom, I have to do it on the top. So on the top, when I multiply, again, keep in mind that these are in brackets. Whoops. So 3 times 7 would be uh, 21. 3 times negative root 5 would be a negative 3 root 5 over, now I've got to do the whole FOIL thing. 7 times 7, 49. 7 times negative root 5 would be a negative 7 root 5. Root 5 times 7 will be a positive 7 root 5. And then root 5 times negative root 5 will be a negative root 25. So on the top, I still have 21 minus 3 root 5. On the bottom, I'll have 49. Minus 7 root 5 plus 7 root 5 cancels. So it'll be minus. The square root of 25 is 5. So the answer to this one in the end will be 21 minus 3 root 5 all over whatever 49 minus 5 is. And that'll be 44. Okay? Um, there's one to try. Maybe try that and then uh, press pause and then come back and see. So I'm going to multiply both top and bottom. So plus root 5 root 7 over root 5 minus root 7. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of this guy, which will be root 5 plus root 7. So root 5 plus root 7. Okay, so on the top, root 5 times root 5 will be root 25. Root 5 times root 7 will be root 35. I'm running out of room. Root five, 7 times root 5 will be another root 35. But they're both positive, no canceling there. Root 7 times root 7 will be root 49, or just 7. All over, root 5 times root 5, root 25, or just 5. Root 5 times root 7, positive root 35. Minus root 35, they cancel. So minus root 7 times positive root 7 would be a minus square root of 49, or minus 7. Okay, so on the top, root 25 is 5, and then I'll have plus 2 root 35 plus 7, over 5 take away 7 is negative 2. Just fixing up the top there, 5 plus 7 is 12, plus 2 root 35, all over negative 2. Now at this point I'm feeling pretty good, but every term is divisible by 2. So I can divide 2 into every term now. Um, I guess another way you can think of it is you can divide the 12 by a negative 2, and you can divide the um, uh, positive 2 root 35 by a negative 2. So 12 divided by negative 2 is negative 6, 2 divided by negative 2 is a negative 1, so it would be negative 1 root 35. So this would be my final answer. That's a fairly complicated one. You might want to try some practice ones of those. Okay, so in this scribble cast, we've looked at adding radicals. We've seen that the distributive property works with radicals. And lastly, we've seen how to rationalize a denominator that is a binomial. Try some questions.